Experts say disinformation campaigns against mail-in ballots are creating mistrust and skepticism as early voting ramps up. It's just one of the issues proving to be a test for democracy this campaign season. The Boston Globe examined some of these problems in a six-chapter series that included potential scenarios that could play out both on and after Election Day. Liz Goodwin was one of the co-authors of that report. She's the deputy bureau chief for the Boston Globe in Washington. Thanks so much for joining us, Liz. The overarching concern seems to be a lack of trust in this year's election results, compounded by the pandemic. What are the issues voters, activists, and election experts are raising, and what's being done to address them? You're absolutely right. The lack of trust is what voting experts are worried about in particular right now, and you're seeing it reflected in the polls. There's been several polls recently that show a majority of Americans um, do not think the election will be fair, the results will be fair. And a lot of that change is driven by Republicans. A uh, majority of Republicans um, are not trusting the results of this election. And you see that driven by the president's rhetoric lately. He said that there's going to be a scam if he doesn't win. He's raised a lot of doubts about new mail-in voting techniques. He's accused mailmen of stealing ballots with no evidence. And all of this rhetoric is really starting to have an effect on voters' attitudes. And because the American election system is very decentralized, it's basically 10,000 little local elections that feed up to the one big federal election, trust is really important. And um, trust in local officials is very important. And so that's something that the experts are trying to tell uh, the media and regular voters, which is that you still have a lot of control over this election. If you vote early, if you make sure to really read the directions very carefully, if you're, for example, voting by mail for the first time, which can be complicated if you've never done it before, make sure you follow every direction very closely. If there's, a if there's an envelope it needs to go into with another signature, don't forget that signature. Um, so that's really the message they're trying to get across is there's a lot you can do to make your vote count. Well, when it comes to in-person turnout, how has the pandemic affected primary races nationwide? And what could that tell us about what to expect on Election Day? Yeah, so at the beginning of the pandemic in you know February, March, you saw turnout really plunge in a lot of elections because I think people were worried about you know contracting COVID, obviously, by going to the polls. And you would see really, really long lines in Wisconsin, for example, in their primary right at the height of COVID. And then you, you started seeing um, kind of it flip where states started expanding mail-in voting uh, as one way to get people to participate. And also, I think Americans just got used to just life in a pandemic, you know, going to the polls with masks on became more normal. And since then, you've seen uh, turnout really smashing records in these primaries. The primary I went to go cover was Florida's in August. And even though there was not a single statewide race, um, it's, you know, everything was a local election, basically, or, you know, a congressman maybe in one, one district here or there, uh, primary battles, you had higher turnout than uh, 2018 primary, when there were all these races for, you know, governor, things like that. So we're starting to see that Americans get used to the new normal and vote in higher numbers than ever. And that suggests that this 22, 2020 election is going to smash turnout records despite all the challenges to voting right now. Yeah, I mean, how are ongoing lawsuits right now creating confusion about how to vote? I think the lawsuits are one of the most underreported stories right now, actually, because there's, um, there's just such a battle right now going on in the courts about the rules, the basic rules of voting. And um, you're seeing the Supreme Court right now just sort of start to wade in and decide them, which will at least give local election officials some finality on some of these issues. But, you know, we wrote about um, elections officials who weren't sure if they should try to get a drop box, for example, because they didn't know if the court was going to allow a drop box or not, because the Trump campaign and the RNC have been fighting tooth and nail at courthouses to 
against drop boxes. They've been fighting against letting um, ballots that come in late because of mail delays be counted. They want those ballots thrown out. And those are issues that are still being fought right now, and there's really no finality on them. The Supreme Court just recently stepped in and decided that in South Carolina, you have to have a witness signature on your mail-in ballot, which um, was a blow to Democrats who wanted that waived due to the pandemic. But there's still so many of these basic, basic issues about how to vote that we don't have a final answer on. Well, what lessons do you think will be learned from COVID-19's impact on voting that will carry over to future elections? I think that's a that's such an interesting question because, for example, this expansion of mail-in voting, it's really unprecedented. Uh, more than two-thirds of Americans are going to be able to cast their vote by mail if they want to in this election, and that's just such a huge change. And I do wonder if that change is going to stick around, if voters are going to like it and kind of keep legislators' feet to the fire and say, no, we want to vote this way. And if so, I think that would really lead to expanded participation. Um, we don't have a really high participation rate in America for elections, and I think vote by mail would do a lot to lift that up and boost that, which is something that theoretically we should all want as Americans, is higher participation. Mm -hmm. And uh, But the thing I worry about with that is if we do see vote by mail um, marred by irregularities, if a lot of ballots are getting tossed out over tiny mistakes, uh, for example, or they aren't arriving in time to be counted, if things like that happen, which I'm hoping they won't, um, I think that could then roll this back and make people, you know, not want vote by mail, which I think would result in lower participation overall. So that would be a shame. Yeah. All right. It'll be interesting to see what actually does carry through beyond this unprecedented year of 2020. Liz Goodwin for us. Liz, thank you very much. Thanks.